This is a demonstration of ultrasound-guided foam sclerotherapy to treat this patient's large, bulging veins. We look for the highest source of pressure causing the visible varicose veins. This is best done using an ultrasound to look at the underlying veins that may be the cause of the problem. We start the assessment at the top of the leg and look for the Mickey Mouse sign. One ear is the femoral artery, which is seen to be pulsating. The face is the deep femoral vein, and the other ear is the more superficial greater saphenous vein. <coughs> when the patient coughs, blood is seen to be moving from the deep vein to the more superficial vein. This means that the valve that normally prevents this direction of flow is not working, resulting in the production of varicose veins lower down in that leg. With the help of the ultrasound, we mark the areas to be injected. The vein is too far below the skin to see with the naked eye. We do our injections with the patient lying down. Okay. Take this off. And we're just going to make sure that we've got fluid coming through it so the thing is flushed. We start treatment at the highest point of the leg that we have marked out. We then obtain access to the vein using a needle under ultrasound guidance. Okay. We can see the needle inside the vein. We also aspirate to ensure that we are within the vein. The nurse mixes the sclerosant medication with CO2 gas to produce a foam. The use of foam sclerosants over the last 15 years has resulted in a much higher success rate at closing large varicose veins compared to using liquid sclerosants. Dark blood, it's not pulsating, so we know we're not in an artery. Foam sclerosants are much stronger compared to liquid sclerosants and result in much less medication being used. The foam is then injected into the vein. Just watch as it in. An added benefit of foam sclerotherapy is that we can see the medication on the ultrasound. This is because gas is echogenic and easily seen on ultrasound whereas liquid is not visible. We can ensure the medication is within the vein and follow it to see how much of the vein we have treated. Where the medication did not reach, we can see that the vein remains very dilated. We then withdraw the needle and access a lower point in the leg where the medication did not reach. We will generally do at least two or three injections to treat this large vein, moving down the leg. When we are finished injecting, we tape some padding over the treated vein and then a medical compression stocking is applied.